so in this lecture we are going to discuss about the most important concept which is nothing but congestion control and quality of service so actually the congestion control and the quality of service frequently called as qas these are the two important things or two important issues which are bound together in a very close manner that is improving congestion control that is controlling the congestion efficiently improves the quality of service okay and improving quality of service automatically means we have a better congestion control isn't it so here these two things these two issues congestion control and quality of service are very important for a network to operate in an efficient manner okay so for this reason now we are discussing these concepts in our lecture the first thing we are going to discuss is data traffic the major thing or the most important thing we have to concentrate more about the congestion control and quality of service is nothing but data traffic so what we will do in congestion control what we are going to do we are trying to avoid the traffic congestion okay so we'll see what is congestion and all in the later discussion but just for now i just wanted to make you familiar with some terms or basic things so in congestion control what we'll do we'll try to avoid the traffic congestion okay now raled and leave iroj next in quality of service yeah guys i'm sorry someone has come now okay so in quality of service what we'll do we try to create an appropriate environment for the traffic okay later we'll be seeing what is quality of service and what are the different issues of quality of service also so in quality of service what we are going to do we'll create an appropriate environment for this traffic to go smoothly from one place to another place okay so this is the main thing about the data traffic so now we'll just look after traffic descriptor so what is traffic descriptor or traffic descriptors traffic descriptors are those which represents the data flow that is how data is flowing in the network so these are some qualitative values which represent how the data is being flown in the network so these values are called as traffic descriptors we'll see uh, these traffic descriptors now so if you see here we have on the x axis the time and on the y axis we have data rate and we have something called maximum burst size and then we have peak data rate and then we have average data rate and all isn't it so we'll see uh, one by one what are all these traffic descriptors and what do they specify the first one is average data rate this one average data rate so what is average data rate so we know average data rate is the total number of bits or the total amount of data which is sent during a given amount of time which is divided by the number of seconds elapsed in that period okay so this is called the average data rate okay so this average data rate is actually a very useful characteristic of traffic so if you see here it is going to indicate the average bandwidth needed by the network or needed by the traffic see this is the average data rate actually okay so what does this line specify it is going to specify the average bandwidth which is required by the traffic okay so if we can know this one 
now then we can identify what is the average data rate that the network is uh, going through or what is the average data rate which is required by that uh, traffic in that network okay so this is average data rate now the next one is peak data rate this one peak data rate so what is peak data rate peak data rate is going to define the maximum data rate of the traffic so if you see here i'm just clearing this one so this is actually the average data rate right so if you see this is the peak data rate so this peak data rate is going to define us the maximum data rate of the traffic that is in the transmission from source to destination within a given amount of time that is over a period of time the maximum amount of data rate which the uh, uh, the maximum amount of data rate of the traffic is called the peak data rate so if you see here it is maximum here if you see in the y axis this is our data rate right so this is our y axis and this is our x axis so the maximum y axis value so here this is our maximum y axis value right so this maximum y axis value is called peak data rate and of course this is also very important factor or a very important measure because it is going to tell us about the network's peak data rate that is the the maximum data rate a particular data traffic requires in that particular network okay so this is also a very important factor and the next important factor is maximum burst size what is maximum maximum burst size so this maximum burst size is referring to the maximum length of the time the traffic is generated at the peak rate okay you you uh, you understand so we have a normal rate but here what is maximum burst size it is referring to the maximum length of time okay so this this is actually see so this part to this part is actually the maximum burst size so what is maximum burst size as defined by the definition the maximum length of time for which the data is generated at the peak rate so here data is generated for this amount of time for the peak rate so this is called maximum burst size okay so actually uh, let us say if data is uh, traveling at 1 mbps uh, uh, 1 mbps that is 1 megabits per second suddenly it may go from 1 mbps to 2 mbps and it may continue for 2 mbps for a period of time for a, some amount of time so this time is called the maximum burst size and again it may come back to 1 mbps again so for the amount of time for which the data rate is high which is nothing but we call maximum burst size okay and the next one the last uh, thing is effective bandwidth so what is effective bandwidth the effective bandwidth is nothing but it is the amount of bandwidth which this network needs to allocate for the traffic okay so we obviously send the information from a source to destination so the amount of bandwidth which is required by the network for the flow of the traffic okay so here this effective bandwidth is actually a function of three values the first one is average data rate the second one is peak data rate and maximum burst size for this reason only we studied all these things okay so this bandwidth the effective bandwidth is a function of three values the first one is average data rate peak data rate and then the maximum burst size okay so these are all the basics uh, we have to discuss before discussing uh, in detail about the congestion control okay next the next thing we have to discuss is traffic profiles so there are different traffic profiles here we have three important traffic profiles the first one is constant bit rate the second one is variable bit rate and the third one is bursty traffic so we'll see one by one what are all these now the first one is constant bit rate or commonly called as cbr okay constant means fixed that is here this traffic model is having the data rate 
which is fixed it will not change see as the time elapses the data rate is constant okay it is saying in the same value isn't it so this is actually what we are going to call it as constant bit rate so here the average data rate which we have discussed just now the average data rate and also peak data rate both are same because the bit rate is the data rate is constant so the average data rate and peak data rate are same and here the maximum burst rate is not applicable because it is not like this right so it is not like this isn't it so this is constant so here the maximum um, bit rate or oh, sorry the maximum burst size is actually not applicable so for a network to handle this kind of constant bit rate it is very easy to handle because it is always having the constant or same data rate throughout the entire time isn't it so the network actually knows in advance about how much bandwidth it has to allocate for this type of data flow why because we already if we already know with which data rate we can send the i mean uh, because we, if we already know that is uh, we have a constant data rate we can allocate that bandwidth only because there is no raising or or there is no sudden uh, uh, a uh, fall down of the data rate right so here the data rate is constant okay so this is the first uh, traffic profile constant bit rate okay the second one is the second profile is variable bit rate so in the variable bit rate or it is also called as vbr now the rate of this data flow changes with respect to time so initially it is like this if you see and then uh, as the time elapses the data rate is also changing so for this reason we call this bit rate as variable bit rate okay so actually here the change in this bit rate is smooth if you see like this gradually it is increasing and gradually it is decreasing and again it is smoothly increasing and again it is smoothly decreasing this is how actually happens okay so in this type of flow the average data rate and peak data rate are different okay so this could be let us say our average data rate right and this could be this point could be our peak data rate okay and the maximum burst size is also here a small value if you see here the what what will be the maximum burst size only this particular point right the maximum burst size okay so here the maximum burst size is also a small value so this type of traffic is actually more difficult to handle when compared to this constant bit rate okay so this is a variable bit rate now coming to the third type of traffic profile bursty traffic so if you observe in the bursty traffic the data rate suddenly changes within a short amount of time if you see initially at time t1 the data rate is very high and if you take at time t2 the data rate is suddenly less so if you compare this uh, uh, burst rate traffic with variable bit rate so here the data rate increases smoothly and also it reduces smoothly but here there is a sudden change in the data rate at one time it is high at one time it is low okay so that is uh, this data rate immediately can jump from uh, 0 to 1 mbps exactly and from 1 mbps again it may shift to 0 and so on and so here the average bit rate and peak bit rate are very different isn't it so here the average bit rate and peak bit rate are okay but here the average bit rate and peak bit rate are very different okay and the maximum burst size is also very important here because in burst rate of traffic uh, we cannot uh, i mean uh, in the in the burst rate traffic at some time we have higher amount of data and at some and time we have lower amount of data so this maximum burst size calculation is also very important okay so to handle this type of traffic this type of traffic actually the network needs to reshape the traffic okay so we'll see how we are going to reshape this traffic and all in the later uh, sessions okay so these are the very important three different traffic profiles constant bit rate variable bit rate and burst rate bit rate okay so these are all the basics of congestion so let us now go to our actual discussion called congestion so congestion is a very important issue in our packet switched network 
so we looked about the circuit switched network packet switched network in our previous classes right so this is an important issue in a packet switched network which is called congestion so what is congestion and when does it occur so congestion in a network occurs if the load on the network let us say we define it as l if the load on the network what is what do you mean by the load on the network the number of packets we are sending to the network is nothing but the load of the network so if the load of the network is greater than the capacity of the network what is the capacity of network the number of packets a network can handle is called capacity of the network so if the load of the network is greater than the capacity of the network then we say it is called congestion in that particular network so very important if the load on the network is greater than the capacity of the network then we say we have a congestion okay so now we have to control this congestion so what does congestion control mean so it actually refers to the mechanism and techniques which we use to control the congestion now we have to control the congestion right and what we have to do we have to keep the load below the capacity that is load must be less than capacity isn't it see here if load is greater than capacity we will get congestion situation so always we must ensure that in the network load is less than the capacity of the network so in order to make or in order to maintain this inequality that is in order to maintain always the load is less than congestion we will use this congestion control techniques okay so this is actually called congestion control okay now the question is that uh, why actually congestion occurs in our uh, network so our question is why congestion occurs in a network so we have many routers and switches in our networks right and these routers and switches have queues if you see here on the screen we have a router and we have some queues here this is interface 1 of the router and this is interface 2 of the router this is an input interface and this is output interface okay now so if you see let us assume uh, okay if you see this is a router now right so these routers are having some queues okay these are nothing but some buffers which are holding the packets before processing and after processing if you see this is the input queue and this is the output queue so what is this input and output queue do okay so this input queue when a packet arrives at the incoming interface this is our incoming interface right and when a packet arrives at the incoming interface before going to the outgoing interface it has three steps so when a packet comes through the incoming interface before going to the outgoing interface it underscore it undergoes three steps the first step is okay the packet is kept at the end of the input queue this is our input queue right now the packet is kept at the end of the input queue before it is being checked okay all these packets in the input queue will be checked by the router why because to which output interface or to which network it has to send this particular packet for this one all the packets in the input queue will be processed okay so the packet is first put at the end of the input queue while it is waiting for uh, or while it is waiting to be checked by this particular router okay now the second step now the processing module of this router it removes the packet from the input queue once it reaches to the front of the queue isn't it so initially the packet is at this place and it reaches from here to here here to here here to here and so on up to this place okay so when it reaches to the front of the queue now the processing module removes this packet okay and now the router 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 uses its routing table and it uh, finds the destination address okay after finding now the third point the third step is now it is kept in the appropriate output queue 
okay it is kept in the appropriate output queue and again this packet waits for its turns to be sent from this output queue okay so these are the three steps which a packet undergoes when it comes to an interface of the router so what we have to remember so our our uh, point of interest is congestion right so we should be aware of two important issues here the first thing is i'm just clearing this one so the first issue is if the rate of the packet arrival to this input interface or to this interface or if the rate of arrival of the packet at this input interface is higher than the packet processing rate that is the arrival rate is greater than the processing capability of this particular router then what actually happens this input queue will become more longer and longer right so this is the first thing now what about the second issue next if the packet departure rate now the packet departure rate is less than the packet processing rate again okay now the router has to process this uh, packet set right? now the packet departure rate if the packet departure rate is from this output queue if it is less than the packet processing rate obviously the output queues also become longer and longer okay so at this moment of time so if the arrival rate is greater than the processing rate then the router cannot uh, process it because more number of packets are coming to it so if it cannot process it obviously it will try to discard those packets okay so when the router uh, is going to discard this particular packet let us say this is source and this is destination let us say here is our router if this if the router is discarding the packet the destination will not get this packet so if the destination will not get this packet what the destination will send in some cases it may send a negative acknowledgement and in some cases it may send uh, uh, acknowledgement for only the received packets okay so here okay actually in tcp we do not have a concept of negative acknowledgement right so i am just telling it in the other way so this is source and this is destination so if the router is going to drop the packets due to this heavy load it may not send the packet to the destination so obviously the destination will not send any acknowledgement not negative acknowledgement okay it will not send any acknowledgement if it does not receive any packet so obviously after time out the sender is going to send the packet again and again if it sends again and again again there will be the more load on the network so if the load is greater than the capacity of the network again congestion occurs okay so this is how actually uh the uh, the reason why we get congestion okay this is one of the most uh, prominent reasons of why we get the congestion okay so this is a small example so now uh, we shall discuss about the network performance so in congestion control we discuss about two major factors which are going to measure the performance of the network the first factor is delay and the second factor is throughput okay so let us now see how this delay and throughput are going to measure the performance of the network let us uh, now see the first parameter delay this is our delay so we'll see how delay as a function of load is affecting the network performance so if you see in this diagram okay so when the load this is our load okay this is our load okay and this is the capacity that is load means cap uh, okay this is our load and this is the capacity okay now when the load this is our capacity okay this is our capacity now when the load is less than the capacity this is load and this is let us say capacity now when the load is very much less than the capacity of the network at this moment of time the delay is minimum see this is our delay so when the load is less than the capacity of the network then the delay is minimum now but if you see when the load reaches the network capacity now this is our load right now the load is now reaching the network capacity so when the load reaches the network capacity the delay this one 
is increasing sharply if you see the delay is increasing sharply like this so if you see here the delay becomes infinite when the load is greater than the capacity so this one this delay is becoming infinite like this it reaches like this when load is greater than the capacity of the network okay so actually this delay is having a lot of negative effect this delay this delay is having a lot of negative effect on the load and obviously as a consequence we get congestion that is what happens when the packet is delayed what actually happens the source will not receive any acknowledgement this is source and this is destination when there is delay in sending the packet the source will not receive any acknowledgement right so when it does not receive any acknowledgement now what the source will do it again retransmits the packet it retransmits the packet and which in turn makes the delay and the congestion even worse why because when we are sending the packets that is when the load is even more greater than capacity the congestion situation even increases even worse okay so this particular area is no congestion area that is when the load is less than the capacity of the network then there is no congestion now here this area when the load is greater than the capacity now we have this complete area is congestion area okay so this one so this complete area is congestion area and only this area is called no congestion area so here load is less than capacity and here load is greater than capacity okay so this is how uh, delay i mean load a uh, load and delay are uh, connected to each other and thereby a factor of congestion now coming to the second factor which is nothing but throughput so now let us see how throughput and uh, delay are related to each other so this is our throughput now if you see again when the load is less than the capacity of the network uh, up to this part when the load is less than the capacity of the network so the throughput is increasing because the load is less than the capacity of the network so we'll try to send more and more packets so more and more packets will be transmitted through the network so the throughput is increasing but at this point of time okay when the load is greater than the capacity now in spite of increasing the throughput what the throughput will do the throughput is decreasing gradually because when the load is greater than the capacity the router's processing capability decreases so when the router's pro uh, uh, processing capability decreases what actually happens it cannot deliver those packets to the destination so obviously the throughput decreases so what is throughput actually the total number of packets which are transmitted in a given unit amount of time so the total number of packets transmitted for given unit amount of time is nothing but throughput so the total number of packets which are delivered to the destination when they when the load is more okay will reduce so obviously the throughput is also reducing so these are the two important factors delay and throughput which uh, which uh, controls or which um, affects the performance of the network okay so with this we have completed our basic introduction to congestion so let us now see the concept of congestion control so as already discussed what is congestion control it is nothing but the technique and mechanism which we use either to prevent the congestion or to remove the congestion so we can prevent the congestion before the congestion occurs now when we can remove the congestion after the congestion happens so we can control the congestion in two ways that is we either can prevent the congestion or we can remove the congestion so generally we can divide these congestion control mechanisms into two broad categories the first one is open loop congestion control where we use prevention mechanism okay the second one is closed loop congestion control where we use removal that is this is before entering into congestion we'll use this one okay to avoid or to prevent congestion what is this technique the second technique is when we get congestion now we try to 
uh, we try to reduce the congestion that is now we try to uh, remove the congestion from the network already congested network so this is reason we call it as closed loop congestion control and this one is open loop congestion control okay now so if you see here we have for congestion control we have two categories of uh, congestion control strategies first one is open loop that is congestion prevention and the second is closed loop congestion removal okay so we'll see each and everything in detail so the first thing is in open loop we have retransmission policy window policy acknowledgement policy discarding policy admission policy and in closed loop we have back pressure choke packet implicit signaling and explicit signaling so let us now discuss about each and every uh, uh, mechanism in detail first retransmission policy so uh, if we have assume there is this is a sender and this is the receiver okay the sender is going to send the packets to the receiver so if this sender assumes that the packet is lost or corrupted what it will do it will again retransmit this particular packet so what happens obviously retransmission increases the congestion in the network obviously but using a good retransmission policy okay using a good retransmission policy can prevent congestion so how we can prevent congestion here the retransmission policy and the retransmission timers okay we discussed about the retransmission timer that is this is our sender timeline and this is our receiver timeline so we used to uh, 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 discuss about the retransmission timer uh, okay if the acknowledgement do not come within this timer again the sender will retransmit that particular packet right so this retransmission policy and the retransmission timers must be designed in such a way that it optimizes the efficiency and at the same time they reduce the congestion okay so the most uh, 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 most important thing we discuss about retransmission policy to avoid congestion is tcp's congestion uh, re, uh, tcp's retransmission policy which we'll be discussing shortly so there we'll come to know how we are going to deal with this uh, congestion with the help of retransmission policy now the second one is the second factor is window policy so we uh, discussed about these windows right sender window receiver window so the type of window which is at the sender may also affect the congestion situation if you see here we have used different types of uh, uh, mean window policies that is selective repeat window if you remember selective repeat window and go back and window so which one is better to reduce congestion obviously selective repeat is better to reduce congestion congestion because in selective repeat we only the sender only sends the last packet that's it okay but in go back and what actually happens let us say in go back and one two three are successfully received by the receiver fourth one is not received okay and again it already sent fifth one and sixth one now what the receiver will say sender sender i want from four to all the other values okay so here not just four we are again retransmitting four and five and six so obviously the selective report window selective repeat window policy is good is better when compared to go back and window policy isn't it so this choosing a better window policy also tries to avoid congestion the third thing is acknowledgement policy now coming to the acknowledgement policy the acknowledgement is this policy is imposed by the receiver so this also contributes to the congestion now if the receiver let us say this is our sender and this is our receiver now if the receiver if it do not acknowledges for each and every packet it receives then what the sender will do the sender will slow down okay if the receiver is sending acknowledgement for each and every packet then what sender thinks actually okay receiver is receiving the packets fine so sender will also increase sending its information sending its packets so in, in spite of this if the receiver is not going to acknowledge 
as and when it receives each and every packet then the sender may slow down its transmission thereby it helps to prevent the congestion so there are many approaches uh, used for this kind of thing okay that is the the receiver can send the acknowledgement only if it has a packet to be sent or if some special timer expires or it can send cumulative acknowledgements that is the receiver received 1 2 3 4 5 now in spite of sending acknowledgements for each and every packet it may send a cumulative acknowledgement okay it may send now the acknowledgement for excuse me i'm just getting a call from the office just a second madam oh Okay, so um, in spite of sending the acknowledgements for uh, each and every packet here, what actually happens? We can send the cumulative acknowledgement from one to five as five. Okay, it sends acknowledgement for five. That is, now the receiver is saying that I successfully received all the five packets. You can send me sixth packet, right? So like this, it also can uh, help the Uh, um, network to avoid the congestion. Okay, and the next one is discarding policy. Next policy is discarding policy. So, uh, actually, discarding policy is the routers discard the packets. Right? This is nothing but discarding. So, what is a good discarding policy actually? So, a good discarding policy by the router prevents the congestion, and at the same time. they are not going to harm the transmission also what is the meaning of this let us say if we are having an audio transmission if you take an audio transmission so if our policy is to discard less sense to packets okay less sense to packet means so when audio conversation is happening okay if we if the router uh, decides to discard less sense to packets because it thinks that uh, congestion is likely to happen then the quality of sound is still preserved isn't it so that is uh, some let us say now uh, we are discussing uh, only audio right so even though some uh, break in the message is there some break in the audio is there we have uh, uh, you you can understand that right so instead of uh, getting the situation or instead of taking the situation to congestion situation the, now the uh, router can discard some packets which may not create problem for communication so this a good discarding policy is also helping the network not to go into congestion situation next coming to the last one admission policy so this admission policy is actually a quality of service mechanism so this prevents congestion in virtual circuit networks this admission policy prevents congestion in virtual circuit networks so here in the virtual circuit networks what happens actually we have switches right so switches they check the resource requirements actually so before uh, performing all the operation they they uh, they look for resource requirement before uh, allowing the data transmission so a particular router or a particular switch can deny establishing a virtual uh, circuit connection if there is congestion in the network so if the router thinks that there is a congestion in the network now the a uh, router will not allow any more new virtual circuit connection so this is another way which we can uh, elevate the congestion that is we can uh, try to cope up with the congestion that is we can try to reduce or we can try to prevent the congestion so these are all the different types of open loop congestion control techniques so let us now go for the next one closed loop congestion control techniques the first thing is back pressure technique so this is our back pressure technique so if you see in this diagram on the screen here this is our congested node so if this node uh receives um, or if this node encounters a congestion situation what it will do it will send the same notification to the other other node through which it has received the packet actually packets from source to this one and one to second node second node to third node but here the third node is experiencing a congestion situation so what it will do 
so it will send this notification to all the nodes in the upstream that is this will send the notification to this one and in turn this will send the notification to this one and this will send the notification to this one so this is actually what we are going to call it as back pressure technique so then the source comes to know that there is a congestion situation okay so if you see here already we got congestion and now we are trying to remove the congestion situation from the network for this is the reason we call this as closed loop congestion control mechanism okay we got the congestion now we try to remove this congestion so this is the back pressure method the second one is choke packet so if you see here this is our choke packet so again this is the node which is experiencing the congestion now in the back pressure technique if you see this one is sending information to this node and then this node to this node and then this node to this node but if you compare this one directly the choke packet is sent from the congested network to the source okay so here the delay of uh, traveling the uh, congestion i mean uh, the delay of notification from this node to this node this node to this node and this node to this, this node has been avoided and it directly sends the information in the form of packet called choke packet okay the next technique is implicit signaling now what is implicit signaling so implicit signaling is nothing but actually <laughs> implicit in the sense actually there is no communication between the congested node uh, and the source okay let us say this is our source and this is our destination we have a congested node so actually there is no communication between this congested node and this is the source node this is congested node this is the destination there is no communication between the congested node and the source node so then how uh, the source can guess whether the congestion situation happened at this particular node so the source guess that there is a congestion from some other kind of symptoms what are the symptoms so when sender is sending many number of packets and there is no acknowledgement from the destination or the receiver then it come to know that okay destination is not sending me any acknowledgement so there could be a chance of network congestion so i should slow down so this is called implicit signaling the sender itself comes to know that there is congestion situation and the last one is explicit signaling so now here the node which is experiencing the congestion will explicitly tell the notification again source congestion and destination now this node explicitly gives the information to this source node that congestion is happening in the network okay but here actually this this explicit signaling is different from the choke packet if you see we discussed about choke packet just now so in the choke packet a separate packet has been sent from congested node to the source node isn't it but in the explicit signaling method the signal is included in the packet itself that is when the information is coming from this node to this node okay it is being transported right? so in the packet itself this explicit signaling information lies in the packet itself okay so this is how actually explicit signaling is going to uh, make the source to know that congestion situation is present in the network so that the source can now uh, uh stop can slow down its transmission to the destination okay so these are all the different types of congestion um, prevention and congestion removal techniques okay so now we we'll, we shall see about the congestion control in tcp so how congestion control happens in the transmission control protocol very important and very easy okay so in the previous class we already discussed about the congestion window okay isn't it what will be our actual window size our actual window size will be the minimum of receiver window size and congestion window size okay so this uh, this is sender this is the receiver okay so receiver has a window called receiver window and what what about the congestion window this is the window of the network the network through which the packets are passing okay so the minimum of the receiver window and congestion window will be the actual window size for that particular network okay now coming to the tcp's congestion policy so how tcp is going to handle the congestion it is going to handle the congestion basing upon three phases the first one is slow start the second one is congestion avoidance and the third one is congestion detection so let us now discuss about this uh, slow start mechanism so if you see here what is the meaning of slow start the name itself specifies so in the slow start phase what actually the sender do i'll explain this exponential increase but i'll just uh, say some uh, information about slow start now okay so actually in the slow start 
what actually happens is the sender starts sending the information with a very low rate of transmission let us say this is sender and this is receiver the sender starts with a very low rate of transmission from sender to re receiver and what actually it do it increases the rate let us say this is the rate it increases the rate rapidly like this okay it increases the rate rapidly until it reaches a threshold value let us say this is our threshold value so until it reaches a threshold value the sender slowly increases its transmission rate okay when a particular threshold value is reached now the data rate is now again reduced to avoid congestion okay so finally if the congestion is detected again the sender again goes back to the slow start that is it reduces and again it tries to send again like this okay we'll see with an example this one so this is how actually the store the slow start is going to work okay so let us now see about uh, how a uh, slow start and uh, with uh, a variation exponential increase actually happens so if you see here initially in round one okay this one the round one the sender is going to send one segment to the receiver now the receiver is sending the acknowledgement what is here ack2 what is the meaning of this sender sender i received all segments up to 2 minus 1 that is one now i, I require it second segment okay so this acknowledgement received by the sender now if you see initially the congestion window is 2 power 0 that is it starts with 2 power of 0 that is one that is initially it will send for one round only one packet okay so if the sender successfully gets the acknowledgement now for round two it becomes two power one that is in the second round now it can send how many number of packets at a time two number of packets if you see it sent the first packet here and again the second packet total two packets here okay so till now it has sent three packets okay in round two it is two packets and in round one already one packet completed so total three packets here okay so for round two also there is successful receipt of the acknowledgements now coming to round three so round three it again increases to two power two so two power two means four that is in the round three it can send how many packets four or segments one two three and four segments so it can send all these four segments in this round four so totally these four five six seven so totally how many packets seven packets okay one two three four five six seven packets okay and for next round next round it is going to increase two power three that is next round it can now send eight packet eight segments at a time so initially it is sending one segment at a time at round two 2 power 1 means 2 segments at round 3 2 square means 4 at round 4 2 power 3 means 8 packets so like this it can exponentially increase the number of segments it is going to send so this is called slow start see initially it started very slowly with one packet okay then it reached how many number of packets then after round 1 it reached 2 packets and after round 2 it reached 4 packets and after round three it reached eight packets so like that exponentially the value is increasing okay so but uh, slow start like this it cannot continue indefinitely that is after uh, round three it is uh, eight next after round four again two power four means 16. so there should be a limit of how many number of segments should be sent at a time right so it cannot continue indefinitely so there must be a threshold to stop this phase okay so for this reason the sender is going to keep track of a variable called send a slow start threshold that is s s t r e s h so this is a variable which keeps track of slow start threshold okay so when the size of this particular window reaches this particular slow start, uh, slow start threshold then the slow start is now going to stop okay and again the next phase starts that is initially let us say the threshold is 32 so initially it is 1 uh, 2 power 0 1 next it reaches to 2 next it reaches to 4 next next it reaches to 16 and next when it reaches to 32 again now uh, it reached the threshold so now here the slow start algorithm stops and again it reaches to the first phase again it goes from 1 2 4 16 and so on okay we'll see a variation of in uh, this one also in the later discussion
so finally what we can say in the slow start algorithm the size of the congestion window increases exponentially until it reaches a threshold so until the slow start algorithm reaches a particular threshold value the congestion window increases exponentially okay now so next thing is congestion avoidance we looked after the slow start now we are going to look after the second one congestion avoidance additive increase we'll see what is additive increase so initially again in the round one i'm not going to again uh, discuss about all these things okay if you see here congestion one in the initial it is one so if you see here in order to avoid congestion what actually done is in the round one the sender sent the segment one and the receiver sent the acknowledgement now for round two what it is going to do it is going to increase only one okay so now it can send in the round two only two and after round two it can only send three that is two plus one three and again three plus one four so like this it is increasing in additive manner it is not increasing exponentially it is increasing in additive manner okay so here if we start with the slow start algorithm actually in in the slow start algorithm the congestion window is increased exponentially so to avoid the congestion before it happens we have to slow down this exponential growth obviously so for this re uh, reason now the tcp is defining this algorithm called congestion avoidance additive increase algorithm so instead of increasing the congestion window exponentially now it is additively increasing the congestion window value okay again when the size of this congestion window again reaches the slow start threshold the the slow start uh, phase stops and additive phase begins okay so if you see here why we are discussing about this additive phase okay very important thing if you see so here we told that whenever it reaches a particular threshold value okay so let us say this one okay now packets are being sent so whenever it reaches a threshold value now instead of increasing the congestion window exponentially now the congestion window will increase additively that is plus one so if previously it is sending 32 now after this 2 power 5 is 32 it will not go for 2 power 6 instead it will go for 32 plus 1 so at the next round it sent 33 and at the next round it sent 34 and at the next round it sent 35 that is when the slow start algorithm reaches a particular threshold value immediately the slow start algorithm shifts to additive increase of its congestion window so this is how additive increase will will be done so when will this additive increase will be done when the slow start algorithm reaches the threshold value that is the congestion window reaches the threshold value then instead of doing exponential increase the congestion window will be now increased additively okay so in the congestion avoidance algorithm the size of the congestion window increases additively until the congestion is detected so until the congestion is detected the size of the congestion window is additively increased next the next thing is congestion detection multiplicative decrease now so until the congestion occurs initially the slow start algorithm starts with zero up with one two power zero is one and it reaches up to threshold and when it encounters a threshold it increases the congestion window additively isn't it until congestion is detected right so now when congestion is detected now what it has to do so if the congestion occurs now the congestion window size must be decreased obviously because what is the congestion condition if the load is greater than capacity then congestion occurs so obviously when the load is greater than the capacity of the network congestion occurs so if the congestion occurs obviously the congestion window size must be now decreased okay so how the sender this is sender this is receiver okay so how the sender can guess that the congestion has occurred only thing is that when it has a need to retransmit the same segment more than one time then the sender comes to know that there is a congestion in the network okay so when does retransmission occur actually retransmission can occur in one of these two cases the first case is whenever the timer times out right this is our sender and this is our receiver this is the sender timeline this is the receiver timeline sender sends a segment and it starts it, re it starts its retransmitter re retransmission timer so if the acknowledgement from the receiver is not received within this retransmission timer again the same segment should be reset 
so when a timer times out the sender has to retransmit and what is the other case when there are three duplicate acknowledgements that is duplicate acknowledgement for the same packet again the second one again the third one so when the three duplicate acknowledgements are received again there is a need for the sender to retransmit so we'll see how tcp is going to deal with these uh, two kinds of situations okay so in both these cases that is in the first case when the timer times out or when the uh, when the sender receives three acknowledgements the size of the threshold is now dropped to so initially if the threshold value is 32 okay so when there is a congestion the size of this this threshold will be reduced to one half 32 by 2 that is now the threshold value will be 16 and even if at if at 16 also there is a congestion then it is again reduced to half that is next time the congestion window is set to 8 okay the threshold is set to 8 okay so like this we are going to tell that this is multiplicative discrete uh, decrease okay so generally most tcp implementations are going to have two reactions the first thing if a timeout occurs there is a stronger possibility of congestion okay one thing to remember is if there is a timeout then there is a stronger possibility of the congestion so uh, what is the meaning of timeout maybe most probably a segment has been dropped in the network and there is no news about that segment which has been sent so in this case if the timeout occurs before uh, uh, receiving the acknowledgement now in this case tcp reacts very strongly so what it will do it sets the value of threshold to one half of the current window size see i just told what if the current window size is 12 to 32 it sets the value of threshold to one half of the current window size okay i'll explain you no problem okay and then it sets the congestion window to the size of one segment now the congestion window will be again reducing to one segment and then again it starts the slow start phase so how it is working i'll just explain you with the help of a diagram so don't worry now now in the second phase if three acknowledgements are received then there is a weaker possibility of congestion okay so in this case the tcp is going to react uh, has some weaker reaction so it sets the value here also it sets the threshold value to one half of the current window size and it sets the congestion window to the value of the threshold and then it starts the congestion avoidance phase so previously it starts the slow start phase if it is timeout but if it is three acknowledgements received then here it starts the congestion avoidance phase so this diagram will make us clear okay if it is timeout okay that is then the uh, this threshold value that is slow start threshold value will be equal to half of the window size and congestion window will be one maximum segment size okay and if it is three acknowledgements then what happens again the start uh, slow start threshold value will be half of the window size and here congestion window value is slow start threshold value okay do remember if it is three acknowledgements the con congestion window is slow start threshold value if it is timeout the congestion window is one maximum segment size okay now so here here the thing is the uh, the the thing is that if congestion window value is greater than or equal to slow start threshold value again these values are set so to to avoid congestion congestion uh, we do these things okay now i'll just explain you this with the help of a diagram so initially uh, let us assume that we have this thing so this is these are our rounds and this is the congestion window so initially congestion window is set to some one okay now it is increasing exponentially the congestion window if there is no congestion problem the congestion window increases exponentially that is 2 power uh, 0 is 1 2 power 1 is 2 and then 4 and then 8 2 power 3 is 8 and then 2 power 4 is 16 now actually our threshold value is 16 only so when this congestion window reaches the threshold value okay what actually happens we told that now we have additive increase isn't it so ss means slow start so after the congestion window reaches the threshold value what will happen we will have additive increase so what is additive increase now the congestion window will be increased by one for each and every other round so here initially it is 16 now it reaches to 17 
18 19 20 21 22 like that okay so at this point of time now we have a timeout so after doing additive increase now we have a timeout so when we have a timeout what we'll do we have multiplicative decrease so we immediately uh, decrease it to again one so if you see again we reduce it to one again we implement the slow start algorithm that is two power zero is one two power one is two and then four and then eight and then uh, let us say if the threshold is 10 here so when it gets the when it is equal to the threshold value again it is going to now increase the congestion window additively so here additive increase will be done 10 plus 1 11 11 plus 1 12. so here we have again the retransmission due to three acknowledgements okay so when uh, the value is uh, the retransmission is due to three acknowledgements mostly most probably it is not a congestion situation okay if you see here uh yeah so if it is due to three acknowledgements okay there is a weaker possibility of congestion so then what will be the value of the current window what will be the value of the threshold it is equal to one half of the current window size so the one half of the current window size what is our current window size let us say this is our current window size okay the current window size is uh let us say this one this one let us say 12 so our uh, it will be one half of the current window size which is six let us assume okay now again it is going to additively increase so here if you see if it is for timeout it is reducing to the maximum segment size one okay and it is again implementing slow start but here if it is due to three acknowledgements it is just reducing it to half of the current window size and it is then starting the additive increase not slow start okay so like this it happens okay so this is how uh, the tcp is going to react when it is going to get the congestion so these two are the important things so this thing if if you are uh, uh, aware of if you understand this one this particular one clearly then uh, this would be very easy that is how tcp is reacting to different things okay so here okay so this so next coming to quality of service so what is quality of service uh, so when you have a network a mobile network so when you say that you have a good quality of service the good quality of service means when the network signal strength is more okay right and the amount which you spend on the network is less and right right so this is nothing but quality of service so here with respect to our network performance quality of uh, service is something like a flow or a, a traffic which seeks to attain that is we want our flow to attain some factors some features so this is nothing but quality of service so there are different uh, flow characteristics okay so traditionally four types of characteristics are there for a flow of data the first one is reliability the second one is delay third one is jitter and the fourth one is bandwidth so this okay so the first reliability delay jitter and bandwidth so what is reliability so reliability means should it be high or should it be low the reliability should be always high that is lack of reliability means we are losing a packets or acknowledgements so if we lose packets or acknowledgements obviously there is a retransmission required isn't it okay so we need more reliability the second one is delay what is delay that is the source to destination delay so actually the applications they tolerate delay in different uh, degrees that is we the sender to receive a delay must also be less isn't it the third one is jitter jitter actually is uh, nothing but uh, the variations in the packet delay i'll just explain you what is jitter okay uh, let us say four packets has departed at time zero time one time two and time three at sender now at receiver they received it they are received at 20 21 22 and 23 so these are all having the same delay 0 is received at 20th second 1 is received at 21 2 at 22 and 3 at 23 so these packets are all having same delay but let us say again now instead of this one okay now these packets are received at 21 23 some 20 and some 25 
so here now these packets or these segments are not having the same delay okay so they are having different delay so this is nothing but jitter that is the variations in the packet delay is called jitter so what is the meaning of this one the uh, if the jitter is high the difference between the delays is large isn't it so if the difference between the delays is large the receiver is getting the packets with different types of delays so obviously it is also not uh, uh, a welcoming feature so the jitter must also be as uh, low as possible and the last one is bandwidth bandwidth we already know different applications require a different uh, bandwidths okay so some video conferencing requests high high bandwidth and some small email application may have low bandwidth isn't it so these are the different uh, quality of service um, characteristics that is reliability delay in jitter and bandwidth so in the next session we will be discussing the techniques which are used to improve the quality of service